Whatever your vision is for the new year, let Pair Eyewear bring that into focus. See what I did there? Pair Eyewear's base frame started just $60, including your prescription. I got my first pair recently, and let me tell you, I am obsessed. It's an affordable and easy way to change up your look with top frames starting at $25. Pair provides a curated selection of base frames for men, women, and kids starting at $60, including wide frames to fit every Face. Visualize a fantastic new year with Pear Eyewear. Go to PearEyewear.com and use code SIBLING15 for 15% off your first pair. And support the show by mentioning that Sibling Rivalry sent you in your post-checkout survey. That's Pear, P-A-I-R, Eyewear.com. Code SIBLING15. Fume takes your bad habit and simply makes it better healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. I love how my Fume looks and feels on my hand. It is well-weighted, is perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com rivalry and getting the journey back today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use my code RIVALRY to help make starting the good habit that much easier. This is Sibling Watch Review of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 9, but we only do our Untucked Review on our Patreon. So if you would like to hear our thoughts about Untucked for every single episode this season, please go to uh, Google and type in Sibling Rivalry Patreon. And you can join us for the fun. Yes, you can. Welcome back to another beautiful episode of Sibling Watchery. We are reviewing episode nine, I want to say, of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. And this is See You Next Wednesday, which I, I just want to start by saying that I think that name is really funny. Like, Wait, the, the, maybe the writer's strike was over right by this time. See You Next Wednesday? <laughs> Because see you next Tuesday is cunt, but see you next Wednesday is because they're doing goth and Wednesday is goth. That's the name of the challenge? The challenge is called see you next, the whole, the whole episode is called see you next Wednesday and the runway challenge was see you next Wednesday. Yeah. Oh. The runway theme. You know, you know how they have, they have titles like, like. Yeah, I guess I missed that. What was it? Just... What, was it uh, what was the one in your season with the, there was one that I really loved. There was a really clever name of a, cha of a runway on your season that I was like, oh, I, I can't remember. I must have but missed it. Which one? 10 4 or 7 on 10 there was one i was like oh what a clever name but i mean i i can't remember i just remember thinking to myself oh someone really ate with that with the name of that challenge uh how's your day monet well not your day but how's how would you feel about this uh, episode of uh rupal's uh drug race uh, i thought it was a good episode of drag race i um I mean, to be honest, uh, during design challenge, there isn't a lot. I like the the end of a design challenge. I don't always love during it because there's not really much going on. People, there are little things going on here and there, but for the the drama is pretty tame. I think design episodes are usually pretty tame. Um, but I thought it was a good episode, and I thought the girls came with some really creative ideas. Yeah. Um, and uh, starting out at the top of the episode, I'm trying to. I don't remember if. Maybe I'm just so uh, from season ten, uh, but like I don't ever remember being so upset or so wrecked over someone going home, and like I mean these this season especially these girls seem to be really, really going through when someone goes home. Like they are practically having a funeral that um that uh that Azunami had to go home. Like and even they get into the, like the sitting on the couch and Safira is still crying, and I'm like, oh my god, I remember crying really hard over a few. A few departures. Thorgy? Uh, no, I didn't cry over Thorgy's departure, but I cried it for Acid Betty pretty hard. Uh, and even though it was on TV, I did cry for Shisha Devane going home. Um, and that was probably it, to be honest. Um, and I think I was upset when Cynthia Lee Fontaine went home too. Yeah, these girls seem to be almost every other week. Every week they're taking. They seem to be taking it really hard. But this week, Zunami must have been really loved. I mean, Plain Jane, uh, uh, they had their little thing, thing a ling a lingin', and she's really upset. And I just didn't realize. Well, not, not that I didn't realize, but um, Morphine and Zunami, they're like they were they were the best of friends at Drag Race. So real good, Judy's honey. Real yeah. good, Judy's. And I want to read my favorite tweet from the uh, my favorite uh, Twitter interaction this week. Was someone said. Uh, Someone just, I like threw some shade to playing Jane online 
and someone says clearly you're mad that mad slash jealous that plan has a far better run than you and i was like I, this is this is camp like that's that's pretty camp i mean i won like three challenges within seven episodes which means i had almost half the wins and the entire rest of the cast shared the other half so i was like but yeah sure Maybe she did. Maybe her. Maybe her runs better than mine. So if plane, so if plane wins another challenge, wins the season, and is never in the bottom, would you say she had a better run than you? I would say if plane was able to get three or more challenge wins within eight episodes, yes, I would say so. And I got my three challenge wins by the seventh episode. But would would her get? Would her having three challenges, three wins for the season, and never being the bottom, and winning the season, would that? I think not being the bottom because you were. Would make her have a better run, but that's but it, I don't think it's likely that playing Jan is going to win. Um, but I think that would stop, that would be having a better run. She had three challenges. Yeah, I I, I do not think that playing Jan is going to have a better run than me. I don't know for sure, but I have a sneaking suspicion that my run on Drag Race will have been better than playing Jane's when it's all said and done. Can we but do I could be wrong. I've been wrong. I've been wrong about things in my life for sure. But can know? we can we do a bet? Can we if you if, if playing Jan ends up having a better run than you, would you eat crow like an actual? Crow? I will literally qualify a better run. She has, first of all, you have to win the show to have a better run than me. I know. I'm saying, if she wins three challenges, if Plain Jane wins more than three challenges, or wins three challenges and never in the bottom, right, and right. she wins uh, the season, and wins the season, yes, I will eat a crow, literally. Bake. I'm happy to broil. This will be. I don't care how it's cooked. I'll eat it raw. Okay. You, raw. You hear it here, y'all. I'm not going to be like Wendy Williams eating crow. By the way, Wendy Williams is so sad what's going on with Wendy Williams. She has uh, frontal lobe dementia, same as Bruce Willis. And um, She has aphasia out. and dementia, yeah. No, aphasia is a aphasia is one of the first symptoms of frontal lobe dementia, which is when you kind of can't remember the names of things. You know, we, when words, just very, very common words that you definitely know for sure, kind of just Cornova. escape you. You're, you're, like, you're like, oh, this is, um, what do you call this thing when you, you talk into it? And it I mean, Wendy you know, literally do that every episode. But she, I think aphasia. I think aphasia is a little more advanced than just not being able to call the name of thing. I think aphasia is like a much more advanced version of that. Um, and I mean, let me just quickly Google aphasia, which is honestly a beautiful name. If it didn't mean what it meant, it'd be a really beautiful name. Loss of ability to understand or express caused by brain damage, specifically when it's caused by brain damage. Yeah. So she has aphasia and she uh, has dementia. It's, it's honestly, it's very sad. And this documentary there's something when you when you see these things i mean this is probably a rivalry topic but like you know we, we also have the free britney movement and then britney is free and then she looked even crazy as hell so you kind of it, it's so hard to gauge like what but again conservatorships i was i got into like a conservatorship hole and reading about those and these guardianships and how and how 90 percent of people in, in in them can't get out and how they're bad for them it's like so many it's like so many things it seems like a broken system I think you should be, yeah, it is a broken system, but I think you should be allowed to have a little bit of mental problems and still be free. Like, just because you have mental problems doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you sh you can't be free, and that you don't get to have uh, ownership of your uh, intel IP and your image, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even if you do have mental problems. My thing is, they're like, if you do have something going it's on. It's like an event that happens, like, oh, you can't be trusted anymore. Like, I I'm, so, I'm so intrigued by, like, what is, like, it's like a one event that happens, they're like, yep. You're done now. We have to I think regard Typically you. speaking, conservatorships are not really put on people as young as Britney Spears. Typically speaking, a conservatorship is for someone who has severe mental disabilities. Uh, maybe someone who has like, uh, like, uh, un, what do you call it when you can't communicate? Autism, nonverbal autism. Maybe, maybe someone who has dementia. Maybe someone who who has severe brain damage. Um, but it's it's not typically uh, for people like Britney Spears. That's why I think the world was so shocked by. Britney Spears is, um, but and now we're seeing, we're like, oh, maybe we really don't, because you know, Britney be out in the streets and uh, like, but like, what's she doing? Honest, in all honesty, what is she doing? That's just so crazy. You like getting naked on Instagram, waving knives around, like, like, I mean, is that that crazy? I think visually, it looks like there's something like that that's not all together there, and she looked like, and she looks in, in the the state that she's keeping herself doesn't look seem to be like someone who is mentally all there with it you know what i mean and that might yeah i think that might have to do a lot to do with a lot of the stigma that we've created around britney spears to believe that she is crazy to believe that she is fucked up to believe that she's not well so stuff that britney spears is doing that everyone else will be doing like a lot of people can do the same thing dancing with knives uh getting showing their vaginas and their titties on on instagram 
Same things folks do all the time. No one calls them crazy. But we have been told that Britney Spears is crazy. So everything that she does is we're like, it's because she's crazy. I don't I don't think that's true. I mean, when, when do women people do what when do women do all the time? They drink, they forget stuff. I mean, she has a mental thing. And apparently Britney Spears also has mental disabilities that were that were sealed. So we're so we so we can't know what they are, so we don't know what, what Britney Spears may be suffering from. Because it's like sealed by the courts. But, I guess but the short end Wendy's, the, Wendy's is is up. We, we know what hers are. I guess the short end of what I'm saying is I don't think that just because Britney Spears is exhibiting some behavior that we think is problematic or we think is odd that she should that we're like, maybe she should be in a conservatorship. That's a really slippery slope. And it's a great way to take advantage of people just because they're but just because they're neurodivert neuro. They're slightly neurodivergent. You know, I mean, we're super, I mean, do we do we know she's neurodivergent? When I say neurodivergent, that just means like there's something in the neurons and the something in your brain is not it, like neuro, neurodivergent doesn't mean autistic. I don't know. I'm not ADHD. autistic. I'm just, is it, is it I'm saying, that she we, we don't know. But if there is something going on in her brain chemistry that's not right, that does not mean that she should be in a conservatorship. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying Brittany just seems like, uh, we, and, but anyway, we, are, we we have gone way off topic. We are not even talking about, I mean, uh, maybe maybe one of these girls should be in, 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 in a conservatorship. Not you advocating for Brittany in a conservatorship. Dawn should be in a conservatorship for her mouth in this fucking season, girl. Not you advocating Britney's conservatorship. That's so Maya feels like don't so my Maya feels like Safira should have. Maya feels like Safira should have won the snatch game, and I certainly could see a world where Safira won. Safira winning and Dawn winning, honestly, it could have been Plat- from what we saw on TV. Oh, it could have been yeah. sorry, pl- Safira winning or or Jane winning. It could have literally been one or the other. Like it could have literally been one or the other. I could have easily been like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, but they're the only two that could have won last week for me. Yeah, agree. Those are the only two worth their salt last week for sure. Am I boring you? Yes. Um, we are seeing emotion from PJ, and I feel like this is something we don't see very often. Like what emotion? She saw that she was she was she, she was being emotional about something. It was I think she was talking about what was she talking about? Watch this two days ago. But she was I think she was emotional about. She was showing some emotion in, in in this Fallout episode. Y'all, if, if y'all watch the episode, it's there. I remember I, I remember watching it being like, "Well, I've never seen PJ show this type of emotion besides a uh, uh, vitriol and vengeance and shade." Um, Don gave and told Nymph- Don. Oh, about tsunami! It was, it was about tsunami. She was really yeah. emotional about tsunami leaving. And then Don went over and told Nymph that she shocked she wasn't in the bottom, which is like, girl, Don, wh- wh- why? 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 Why did you feel the need to offer that information up? Like she wasn't at the bottom. So like, walk on by to quote Dion Warwick, you know. And then Don, oh Don was saying that every one of these eliminations from this point on are are going to be a gag. And I was like, bitch, why? Not if you got eliminated or morphine. Like y'all don't have no wins. Everybody else has either more than one or a win. So if Dawn or Morphine got eliminated at this point, I would have been like, oh my God, this is a gag. I can't believe this. I was like, she is really thinking high of herself. Come on, all of these, the rest of these emotions are going to be, the rest of, the rest of these eliminations are really going to be a gag. It's going to be really crazy to see. Not for you or Morphine. I do believe that the Queens left are very strong. Like I do believe, I do genuinely believe like so far, the elimination order is honestly pretty spot on. Like I genuinely believe that. It's been pretty damn on point for me, you know? Yeah, but if it was more from or, or, or Dawn, I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, I can't believe they're gone. I'm like, I mean, I mean, has Dawn, outside of design challenges, and I'm loving Dawn's personality, and Dawn is, honestly, she's, I think she's adding a lot to the season. But outside of the design challenges, has she really, like, in SNL, she didn't, and in the, oh, in, in the Rusical one, I thought she was actually pretty good. I mean, her biggest flop was definitely Snatch Game. Right. Um, and then she kind of was middle of the pack in the other um, performances, in the performances. And she's been pretty much top of, bottom of the tops in all the designs. So the thing about Donna is she is a good designer. It just happens to be that Nymphia and Q are both better than she is. And yeah. she is good. Like, I'm like, I'm like wow, Donna has really good design aesthetic. Oh, really but great. She's, but she's always bested by Nymphia and Q. They're like, so every good. time. They're so, so, you know, they're so good. They're, they're so good. Um, so the next day during the rue mail, rue hints that uh, she gives a hint of this like goth theme. They're like, what does this mean? What, what does goth mean? And then they do this, uh, this uh, spit take challenge, which there doesn't really seem to be a metric for this. Like, I don't know what the metric is for like how to win, but Nymphia, 
but Nymphia wins and she got twenty five hundred dollars. I wrote. I don't know how. I don't know how you win or what the point is because because RuPaul is the one making the jokes. They're just spitting. Right. I was like, so is a challenge who spits? I was like, I don't get the challenge. Are they spitting? Like I thought they were supposed to spit if if the joke made them laugh, but they all spit on the first ones, and I was like, oh, is it who spits the furthest or who has the biggest or explosion? The best? Well, I will say there there is a comedy to reacting to a joke, and B. Arthur was really good at it. If, if a joke was made at Dorothy's Born X's expense on um, Golden Girls, B. Arthur's deadpan to camera was as funny, if not funnier, than the jokes made at her expense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so there is there is an art to it for sure. Um, interesting challenge, though. Interesting challenge. And I, Nymphia won. Again, anyone could have won this. Anyone could have won this. I'd be like, yeah, sure. Give them $2,500. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I will say, looking at Nymphia's, there was a nice spray to hers. If you look at when Sephira spat, it was just like two chunks. two gl- like There was like two globs that came out. Nymphia gave a nice like array of spit. There was like a it was it was it was like a it was like a it was like a cloud burst. It was very creative that Nymphia. Well, I feel like Sephira had the only one that was like globby. And also I feel like a good part of a spit take is that you're drinking while someone makes a joke. The point of a spit take is that while it makes you spit. while you're consuming, you hear a joke and then you bust out laughing. And no one was sipping. Maybe someone was, but I don't remember anyone sipping when RuPaul told someone the joke. Someone did. Someone it was like the third or fourth one. Like they were doing it and it looked like real. Everyone else was like. So whoever that was, I think that person should have won. Mm. And then once it's all over, Dawn says straight to camera during her confessional, she is completely confident that she will not be going home on a design challenge. Um, She's right. Which, um, honestly, I agree. I, I, I would have been really shocked if Dawn went home this episode. Even before I saw anything, I'd, I'd have been like, oh, that was really shocking. She's Especially really when, we have, like, when we have two queens who notoriously don't sell on, on, the, on the episode. Oh, yeah. Um, the two in the bottom. Yeah. Um, yeah, Donna's very confident, and I think she's right. Like sometimes, bitch, you gotta encourage yourself and know that you are that bitch. And Dawn is very good. Honestly, her Balenciaga thing last design challenge, you know, the alien thing? thing was so good though. That fucking copper good thing was again. Terrible. She's always bested. Like her stuff is good, but someone's just a little bit better. You know what I mean? Um, Dawn. Um, oh, before you skip over, I want to say before you skip past this, uh, something that um, Plasma said. She was like three design challenges in one season. I feel like that happens more often than people. She's like, that happens since season three. It certainly has. And I feel like three design challenges a season is really not that strange. We had three design challenges in my season, and we only had eight episodes that, that weren't like the last two. I would be mad. I would, if it wasn't, I would be so irritated as a design challenge. I would be so upset. I don't need three design challenges. Season 10, we had, season 10, we had one design challenge a season, was a sponge situation. Um, and What about the ball? Oh, the ball. Sorry, the the sponge and the ball. We had yeah. two, and then All Stars four. We didn't have any, which was amazing. Makeover. What? Oh, but you but you guys really the outfits already made for makeover. Yeah. Back back in my day, you used to have to make your makeovers outfit in the room. Yeah, and then of All Stars seven, we had two, and that I found that to be annoying. I hated that. I hated that we had two. When the second one, the fucking the 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 Irish Owl, whatever the hell. No, I was. It was a Wheel of Fortune ball, whatever. I hated it. I was like, oh my God. Oh no. That was the first one. I was like, okay, we did the one. I remember like, guys, we had the one design challenge. It's great. And then the RuPaul design one came out. I said, oh my God, girl, nobody want to do this shit. It was actually a fun one. I like my own. You don't like sewing? I don't like sewing. I or designing? I, I like, I, I wish, what I wish is that I could design a thing and they bring out stitchers and they make the thing. That I would well, love. That's what Maya did. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that I would love. I get to design it, and someone else put the needle to the thread and make and sew it for me. Fabulous. So is Jane trying to get into Plasma's mind? Like Jane comes over and is talking to Plasma, and she's like, "Like, why are you doing? Like, what's going on?" It feels like honestly, Jane, because she, because because Jane is like, "Don't use the fabric I'm using, because you're gonna get ate up." Which honestly is not bad advice. Well, it's literally what happened last time. The judges, uh, Law Roach was looking at those two next to each other, and he was like, "You came out here in the same fabric as someone that looked better than you, bitch. Are you dumb?" And that's literally what PJ is pointing out to her. But the real villain is Dawn. Well, okay, Dawn is not. She's not the villain in this. 
No, Von, Don's the real villain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean but into that. Don is a real villain. Plasma suck out her. Plasma was seeking her advice. Like Plasma was like, "What do you think?" Was Don supposed to lie? No, Don's not, Don's not the villain because of this. Don's the villain because of other things. Don's the villain because because of can I be honest? Don's the villain because she's always giving completely unsolicited advice, <laughs> uh, takes that no one asked for, walking up to uh, Nymphia and being like, "I can't believe you weren't at the bottom." Anyway, la la la. la. That is a little villain behavior. Oh, yeah, she did say that at the beginning to Nymphia. And I mean, she's not wrong, girl. Nymphia's not doing an amazing job. So, And and also, she's also sharing the sentiments of the other girls. She's just like, we were all. And everyone else was like, yeah, girl. Donna's just the messenger. Um, Maya, So Maya is obviously nervous because she had to lip sync the last sewing challenge. Um, so she, she's not boating well this episode she seems to be having a lot of uh struggle and then he gets over to Sophia and Sophia is like Baby, I don't even know what goth is which is a wild take what do you mean you don't know what goth is maybe Sophia didn't grow up with goth I mean I, did, I obviously know what goth is but maybe, maybe Sophia, Sophia is also is she like really religious I don't know that she is what high school doesn't have goth I've there I don't know that there is a high school that doesn't I went to school in Clayton County my school is almost all black and we even had goth kids they got are there high kids. schools that are there high schools that don't have golf kids? My high school, I went to also a music theater. I went to an arts high school. We didn't have golf kids. There were no golf kids at your high school. No, we were. There were no golf. The closest thing we had to a golf kids was the four kids that were tech majors because they didn't want to do MT anymore or whatever it was, and they mm -hmm. were in tech. And maybe one of them had a ginkgo gene or two, but like golf kids, no, 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 no. That's that's, that. that's that's really hard to believe, but sure. Um, but it's wild to me. How do you America? not? Also, how do you not like? Also, just because they're on golf kids, just go. Like, how do you not? That doesn't make sense. That's like saying if I didn't go to school with any um, like punk rock people, I don't know what punk rock is. Why? Why? How are you? Like, Safira is in her thirties, but how do you not know what golf is? Why are you trying to validate Safira's experience? It doesn't make sense to not know what golf is at this age. How do you not know what golf is? That 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 you see, you have to be missing a very uh obvious part of. Basically, the world's culture. If you're like, I just, I just have no clue. I, I mean, maybe she was like, I don't. Maybe what she was really saying was, I don't have a deep understanding of golf. But do we have a deep understanding of any of the stuff we do on Drag Race? Sometimes we just gotta fucking get it together, you know. You know, so fair. I want to let you know that your voice, your voice is heard by me, and I, I, I value your contributions. And I hope one day you do meet a golf person and you have more insights in the golf community. But I hear you, sister. Maybe you can have the same compassion for Britney Spears. Um, Nymphia tries yeah. to get some. So Nymphia tries to get some fabric from Jane and Nymphia is, Jane is not, Jane does not help. Jane, but Jane is going on about how much she doesn't help, but then Plasma walks out in Jane's wig. So do you help or do you not help? Like she was like helping other girls in the competition. I hate when girls help other girls in the competition. Granted, that's not a ton of help, but it's certainly not nothing. I'm about to say, she probably looked at Plasma and be like, baby, this wig is literally going to do nothing for you. First of all, well, she should have, she should have brushed it for her before she gave it to her. Because Plasma walked out in that wig, and that looked like it looked like Jane pulled it up from under her shoe and plopped it on Plasma's head. Like, give, give her the wig and a brush. How about that? That's real help. Well, I mean, she could have brushed the wig herself. Like, if I give you a wig, it's up to you to brush it. Like, girl, brush your own wig. It's like, I gave I gave you the wig, and I got to brush it. Now, now what I could glue it down to? Some people, now I got now I got to prep your hair. Some, now I got to pin it in. God damn, bitch, I gave you the wig. Brush it yourself. Some people are sicker than others, girl, and they need more help. Plasma clearly needed more help. Um... And then uh, Nymphia tried to learn the oh, long... Oh, I want to before we go past. But with the whole Dawn and Plasma thing, I think when, when Dawn's advice, I think Dawn gave us sound advice. However, Plasma knowing that this is not her bag, this is not a challenge that she knows she's going to thrive in, do the thing you can do. Like, the challenge that you're the worst at is not the one to change your aesthetic and do something new. Now, that's bad advice. Like... Do what you can do well, like make your old 1922 trumpet dress and do that thing and do that really well. Don't try to do be the young uh, 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 thing that plasma uh, that Dawn is telling you to do. That's not good, girl. Now is not the time. Do your thing. I, mean, I can see the validity of that, but if your thing, if there, if there's like an insinuation that the thing you're doing it will probably land you in the bottom this time because there were more girls last time for her to get lost in the crowd in. And now there's less people to get lost around in. So like she's like, that thing, that thing did not work last time. So I don't I don't want to do it again. Cause I I did get read down for doing this thing. But like, it did not I, 
it wasn't about that her outfit was bad. It was that someone wearing the same thing, the same exact, just using the same fabric as her mm-hmm. was better. So it wasn't that your thing was ugly, we hated it. It was, well, this person next to you is wearing this couture thing and you're wearing this thing I could have got from Filene's basement. I think that was a critique. It wasn't that she did a bad job. It was that someone with the exact same materials as her did way better. So why couldn't you meet be that level? Work. And then what happens is Plain Jane comes over and she starts like harassing Plasma. And I love that Plasma goes, a lovely incendiary coming from Plain Jane. How unexpected. That is one of my favorite quotes from the episode. Right. A lovely incendiary comment from Plain Jane. How unexpected. I love this edit that Safira is getting because Safira is... She's really dealing in this like mother nurturing thing, and plasma. I mean, plasma is spinning out because Plain Jane is is harassing her. Uh, Dawn didn't give her bad advice, and she's listening to Dawn's advice. Well, sorry, Dawn gave her good advice, and she's listening to it, but she should not be. And she's like spiraling her moment. Sephira goes over. She's like, calm down, breathe in, breathe out, know who you are, and do what you can do. And honestly, in moments where you are just in like this, like this pressure cooker that is Drag Race. And bitch, it is so easy to forget who you are in fucking Drag Race. And having Safira come to her to that movement, <laughs> did it save her from going home or being the bottom? No. But I think it probably gave her uh, 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 um, some clarity and eased her mind from being so in her head in that moment. You know, for me, this edit for Safira does nothing for me. It it uh, it makes a Safira uh, ancillary character in everyone else's story. Like, the story's never about Safira. Safira is, is a supporting star in everyone else's story. Someone else needing help. Someone else feeling sad. Someone else feeling down. Someone else feeling something. It's never about Safira. I know that I would not want. I would not want this edit for myself personally because it just makes you like the person who's always. The, it makes you the 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 helper, the best friend, the fairy godmother. But you'll but in this version of the story, you'll you'll never either be Cinderella or the villain or the wicked stepmother. You'll be like one of the mice or you'll be the fairy godmother. You know what I mean? So I I mean I I don't I, it doesn't do much for me in terms of television and I certainly would not I certainly would not want this edit for myself at all because we're not seeing we're not getting to see a lot of Safira we're not getting to see all we're getting to see is how Rafir, how Safira we, reacts to people's hardships but we're not getting to see how she does but I guess through the reflection of how she's talking to other people you can see how Safira would deal with that and when things come up Safira kind of squashes them really quick or just moves on or just doesn't fight or just doesn't argue at all. And that doesn't make for particularly uh, riveting television, in my opinion. I, was say, I disagree with that. I think in these moments, we are seeing who Safira is. And that is and that is who she is, right? That is who Safira is in moments of stress and whatever. So I think um, I think we are seeing who Safira is. And it's it, it definitely painted, painted a picture of me. As someone who I knew Safira in New York and where we, we hang out a lot, no. I wouldn't say I like knew Safira deeply, but I think through watching Drag Race, I'm discovering a lot of who Safira is, how she treats other people. I think that's definitely core to her personality, who she is, and um, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not mad at it. I will say the way that she is helping uh, Maya. There is this like we don't we could quite kind of don't know what she did. We we don't know if she. Because Maya, if okay, Maya posted the look and she tagged, she said sewn by Safira Crystal. I don't know if Maya is playing into the whole thing or Safira, but Safira is very adamant about, no, I just cut it out. I mean, I showed her what to cut out and I told her what to sew. But Maya said dress sewn by Safira Crystal on her Instagram. So I don't even know what's what. I mean, it, it's, I mean, uh, and all the girls were like, Maya you and- sewed it, you made the dress for her. Maya and um, Safira seem both pretty uh, clear on who did what in terms of this gown. Um, no, they and... don't. Safira said, I didn't sew it. Maya said she sewed it. So I want to be clear. This, this It says, dress sewn by me. And there's an exclamation point directly after. It does not say sewn by Christopher. It says, dress sewn by me with an exclamation point. Really? It, actually. Yep, dress sewn by me. Um, and Safira kept saying multiple times during Untucked, I did not make this garment. I cut it out and I told you how to do it. She keeps saying I did. So we, I think we know exactly what Safira did. And her and my, her and Maya see that, that Maya said to dress so much Safira for song. I don't know. Um, but her, her and Safira seem to be on the same page about it. So I think we do know what Safira did. Um, but I will say if, if, if making a dress is three parts, designing, cutting it, and then sewing it together, uh, I mean, Safira low-key did two out of three. 
You know what I mean? Like if if a dress is designing it, cutting it, and then sewing it, and then sewing it together, and uh, I mean two out of three is, but, but I mean it, it doesn't matter. Like the thing is, we've seen, but the, a lot of the design idea was um, Maya's, but it was edited by Safira. Like Safira was like, try this instead of this, try this instead of that, try this instead of that, which means she essentially edited and kind of redesigned it. And we've seen this on Drag Race before. And also it happens when you don't see it. You know, me and Thorgy helped Derek Berry make her outfit on the first episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. We sat down, we showed her how to make a leotard. I did. What was, I, that, I what was that part for her? What was her category? It was uh, Christmas Queens. Oh. I don't, I don't remember what Derek Berry made. Anyway, continue. It was like a Christmas bikini. Yeah, she 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 was gonna make a leotard, but then she didn't know how to do it. So then, so so then, uh, Thorgy made a hoop skirt for her, and then she like kind of finished it up, or maybe Thorgy cut it, then she sewed it or something like that, and then she just kind of wore some uh, bra and panties that she already had with her, because you can wear your own underwear. Work. Um. Yeah, and, and Maya does come with this line. She said, "Oh, I had a good night. Oh yeah, Derek better work." Um, she and everyone is like, "Ooh, girl, we had to. We said, oh, I didn't get any sleep last night because I was working so hard on this dress." And my, I was like, "I had, I slept well. I got mine done. What, 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 what was y'all up? What was y'all doing? What could y'all possibly have been doing?" Which I don't think, well, I don't think lends to the narrative to that's a fear sort of because I mean, Maya's dress was not super complicated, right? It was a tube with a mermaid at the bottom, so she could, but she could have sewn down the workroom. But the fact that she doesn't know how to sew, I feel like it would take longer to make for her. Um. Yeah, I mean, I can. I, I looking at her garment, I can see why she did it quicker than everyone else. It was very there's, easy. Two seams there's up just the side. Not, there's not a lot going on. Yeah, it was it's two four, seams up the side. It's, a seam I think here. it's uh, it's three pieces. Yeah, one, two, and then three. It's there's three and pieces these. on the whole garment. Um. So yeah, there, there wasn't a lot going on, and it is a interesting flex to to be. I, I mean, but then there comes the questions like you can keep working, but once you've done everything in your skill set, what else is there to do? Yeah. You've done everything you know how to do. What are you going to do? Just keep looking at it and poking at it and lifting it up and putting it back down and stepping back and getting closer. You've done everything you know how to do and a couple of things you didn't know how to do. You asked someone else to help you with. So like, what is she supposed to do? Yeah. I think that my, uh, um, reach, all the skills that she had in her, in her little purse from Miami, and she did the best she can with what she got. I am so curious. Um, I mean, I love. Well, sorry, we'll get to critiques later. What? No, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. What was your vision for the new year, baby? It's already March. Is there a goal you've been working toward for a long time, and you are switching things up in 2024? Whatever your vision is for the new year, let Pair Eyewear bring that into focus. See what I did there? Pair Eyewear's base frame started just sixty dollars, including your prescription, baby, including your prescription, and you can save by using the pre-tax FSA and HSA dollars. Plus, get fifty percent off by using code Sibling15 at PairEyewear.com. I got my first pair recently. And let me tell you, I am obsessed. Pair is budget-friendly without compromising on style or quality. It's an affordable and easy way to change up your look with top frames starting at $25. I love the versatility my frames bring to every situation and outfit just for me. Pair provides a curated selection of base frames for men, women, and kids starting at $60, including wide frames to fit every face. Find your fit right from home with a virtual try-on, then switch up your look and a snap with top frames that start at just $25. New designs drop every month, including fun collabs, and they have free standard shipping and a flexible 30-day return policy. So basically, you can find your perfect fit anytime, anywhere, any place. Visualize a fantastic new year with Pair Eyewear. Go to PairEyewear.com and use code Sibling15 for 15% off your first pair. And support the show by mentioning that Sibling Rivalry sent you in your post-checkout survey. That's Pair, P-A-I-R, Eyewear.com. Code Sibling15. No matter how you started this year off, when you use the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can build your credit scores with on-time payments for 
everyday purchases. Plus, there's no annual fee or credit check to get started. With a Chime checking account, you can get paid up to two days earlier. Baby, we love that. 48 hours, I could spend a lot of money in 48 hours. And with a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Chime offers fee-free overdrafts with SpotMe. Overdrafts up to $200 without any fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for SpotMe, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. Ditch the monthly fees. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. Chime gives you access to 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. You can easily find one near you with the Chime app. With Chime, you can send and receive money Pay friends through Chime no matter what bank account they use and cash out your money fee-free. Start building your credit. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash rivalry. That's Chime.com slash rivalry. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by the Bank Corp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal and over-the-counter advance fees may apply. Call 1-844-244-6363 for details. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payers. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Have you ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you're just climbing Everest and flip-flops? Yeah, been there, done that, girl. But there's a breath of fresh air, y'all. Fume. It's not about giving up. It's about switching up. Fume takes your bad habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. You get it? Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. I love how my fume looks and feels on my hand. It is well-weighted, is perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Fidget spinner be gone. And I love the beautiful real wood finish and shape of it. The flavors are intense and it always hits the right spot for me. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash rivalry and getting the journey back today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use my code rivalry to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Let's talk about these looks. Um... Okay, this judge, her name is, what is it? Kaya Gerber. Do you know Kaya Gerber? I don't know who Kaya Gerber is. I mean, apparently she's a supermodel. And she, she, by the way, she's a really good judge. She's she has a, some, Andy Crawford's daughter. Got oh. it. She has some really great critiques. And she had a really some really cool moments in Untucked. Not, nothing too poignant, but like she she made a really good point in Untucked, which we'll talk about during our review of that. But her I outfit, thought she was a good judge. Her outfit is so dope. She looks, oh, looking at her, she looks like a, she's, she's stunningly beautiful. And she looks like a fucking model sitting there. So that's not shocking. I love RuPaul's dress. It's a very I didn't I didn't love it when him walking, but seeing his picture of him in it, it's actually very beautiful. It's got a really cool swag in the front. Yeah. Um, so let's go into the look. So plain Jane's look is it, this is probably her plainest look she's made on the show. I don't know. She made a lead to her last time too. Yeah. Um I don't think this it's look plain. I assume Michelle was saying that it seems like cause plain often vibrates. She's so well put together. Her looks are so well done. I could, I could say, I think with the uh, the ribbon threading can look a little sloppy and not as high uh, and not and not a high level and high vibration that we're accustomed to by PJ. But I still think this is a good look, and I think she looks good. I think the look is fine. I think it's uh, you know, bottom of the tops. Um, but she does look good. But I think what it is when you're sewing when you when the outfit is black. When everything is black, you, you just lose a lot. You lose yeah. dimension. So when she had that blue out on, the blue itself is so vibrant. And then the detailing, which actually her blue thing was less, was a little less detailed than this, mm -hmm. but that blue was just so bold. So I think when it comes to all black, you just have to be a little bit more, I don't know, like RuPaul said, bigger shoulder pads would have been nice, but she does look good. But I, I agree with Michelle. I, I did expect a little bit more from Plain Jane, but I certainly would not expect anything less than this from Plain Jane. I would expect Plain Jane to look good and to come out and have a, and have her proportions be understood, have great makeup, have some good hair, and sell it on the runway, which she did do. Yeah, she's good. Let's go on to Maya Iman LePage. Um, I don't... I, 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 aren't we done with crows on the shoulder? 
I feel like anytime someone does like something like spooky or gothy, there's always like a, a crow on the shoulder. It's like such a, a common trope in this world. Um, so I think that's kind of tired. Again, Maya loves putting a choker or a feather or something on her neck to let us know how short it is and how small her neck is. It's, she's, and no matter how many critiques she gets about it, she will keep on doing it until the day she dies. I'm convinced. Also, her necklace is her necklace crooked. Is her necklace crooked? Yes, it could be on like, girl, straighten your necklace out. Um, I, the crows really don't seem upset me as much as they seem to tell you. Um, I don't really mind the crows. This dress is just this dress is about as plain. The only thing they can make this dress more plain is if it was a cocktail dress. Like, there just is not a lot going on with this garment. It is hard to get excited about this garment. It does not make it easy to be pumped up about this. Um, so I, I do think that her bottom placement is, is, is quite justified. Um, and, but that, that makes sense because this is not her area of expertise. This is not, this is not where she shines. Yeah. So I don't think anyone's really shocked by that either. And what's going on with that makeup? Like the garage door thing. I just like, she just literally just put, took black eyeshadow. I was like, boom, like there's nothing, maybe she did, she does something more creative than makeup, like something like, again, she doesn't have the same skill set as Morphine, but something that felt like she was trying to sell the look a little more and something with the eye makeup, that would have at least made it feel, okay, you work, bitch. But it's just like, she just put some, shoved some black eyeshadow on her eyes, did no eyebrows, and put some crows on her shoulders and was like, goth. But again, I think she's working within her skill set. I think she's working with what she got, and she's like, "This is this is what I can do." Like, I don't know what else. I don't know what else to do. I can, I can, you know, try my best. It's kind of like you ever know when Trixie uh, does like goth tricks. She does the same face she does, but she wears like black lipstick and like mm -hmm. maybe black hair. And everyone's like, "Whoa!" Which is so great. I guess Trixie's a great makeup artist. Such, but no, but I'm, I'm not saying she's not a great makeup artist. What I'm saying is when Trixie does like her goth Trixie, it's like the same makeup. But even Trixie, even Trixie says this. She just does the same face, but she just does it in black with black hair and because her branding is so strong when you when you uh curve from it even a little bit every it's like if Ariana grande goes out without a ponytail like everyone's like whoa when your branding is so strong any little change is so noticeable no i'm saying that i'm saying it's crazy that trixie just does that because trixie like is a really good makeup artist like trixie is really like she's really good with a brush like she can like really do some cool stuff so, but and again, but to your point, why do why does she when she can just do that? And it's uh, it's fucking fierce and it's a gag. Let's go on to Dawn, which I thought this look was absolutely beautiful. This head thing is so cool, and finding out that she's and that she has a degree in engineering, like is was a, a shock. And I think this was this look, she looks amazing. I loved her. I loved her eye makeup. It was again because it's so different than her regular. I just think she looks really cool, and I really like this look. And I think Dawn is really just a cool drag queen. This, this was cool. Yeah, she said she used fluid dynamics. I do not know what that is. I do not have a degree in engineering, but she used fluid dynamics. And um, she looks really good. This is a really cool look. This was one of my favorite looks. Uh, but again, the thing is, she always does well, but just someone just does a scotch better than her. Um, but that being said, she looks amazing. And uh, she really pads for the gods. She, she does. is she is gonna build that those hips out. She's she is for, she is dead ass about padding. And I think oh, another I thing, love that. Another thing too is is the proportionizing the proportionizing of it all because she also cinches her waist to within an inch of her life. Like she wears a size too small corset to like, so it just makes her proportions look insane. It makes her hips look even bigger because her waist is so teeny weeny. She's great. She's a great drag queen. Um, morphine. I think when she said she wears a small corset, she meant a short corset, not a corset that's actually too small. She goes because she doesn't like the 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 edge of the corset to show when it goes up to your rib cage. That's what she, that's what she said. Untucked. Is it? Yep. Huh. Let's go on to morphine. Love Dion. They try to shade this look. I nothing that Michelle Michelle cannot convince me this was a, this was a bad look. I think that like this was a great look. I think Morphine looks really good. Her makeup was absolutely stunning. I uh, 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 what she did with the mermaid at the bottom, using like that different that 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 leather with the with the with the velvet. I think this was really great. I think Morphine did a really good job. Yeah, I think she did a good job. I think she's the top of the the top of the middle. Um, I think she looks. No, good. she was bottom three. 
Well, actually, now that I think about it, the I if I'm going if I'm re- truly going through these all, the only look that I think are worse than hers are the two girls in the in the bottom. No one else's look was yeah. was worse than her. So honestly, Michelle kind of ate like she was bottom three for me. She looks good, but when the competition is stiff, you're gonna be in the bottom three even if you're even if you're good. Like this look is not bad. It's not, but it's not brilliant. It's not great. And the other looks were just so good. Like she wasn't better than Dawn. She wasn't better than Q. She wasn't better than um, Safira. She wasn't better than uh, Nymphia. So she just like she looks good, but in this in this particular realm of these two particularly strong, three particularly strong sewers, and, and another uh, girl who like can sew, she just didn't have what it takes to to get in the top. So that makes sense to me. But to give her a, a bottom three, a RuPaul, uh, 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 a fucking morphine, you're wearing a pale, and like to, I don't think it warranted that, or giving her that kind of critique was justified because it is a very good, strong look. That's who should be in the, who should have been in the bottom besides her? Um, no, no, no one could have been should have been in the bottom for that. I mean, but sometimes, I mean, listen, we're gonna get there, but this should have been a double a double win. Okay, let's look more of that. Um, so let's go on to uh, Plasma. And the thing ooh. about Plasma is, Plasma, what? What are, you, what are you saying? I said, oh, she looks oh. god awful. Plasma keeps saying that she can't sew, but this this leotard has three or four panels on it. And that's not particularly easy to do. And she made a pretty decent pair of pants. This look is not great. And I do agree with Q. This shrug she made is actually really cool. I wish it was bigger and went to the floor and more than a sh- more than like a uh, uh, a bolero. I wish it was all like a full coat or maybe even to the back of the knees or even a trench to the floor. I don't know that she had enough fabric or material or even time to do that. But this look could have been really cool. Um, and she's doing the she's doing the neck thing. This necklace does not make a lick of sense. I do not understand why her hair is not combed. I mm-hmm. those are the things that really drive me the craziest. This necklace and this hair are just making me want to rip my eyes out. There was just so many air. Like it, Michelle was right. Like it's like this. Like she had the platform shoes, and it was it was just <laughs> it's just a bad look. Like I just don't understand. And then she's just standing there looking crazy with that eye makeup and the lip thing and the choker, and she's just on there looking just so sad as she's being critiqued. This was. This was an insane way to walk on the runway. I cannot believe this girl did this. This is insane looking. Um, let's go on to Safira Crystal. I love this look. I think she looks stunning. I would wear this. I love the hair. I love this big black uh, sequin part busting out of the gown. I I really like this look. I I love the way that she did the sleeves that like kind of like uh, droop, not droop, that like extended sleeve she did the dress the way this dress is picking up off the ground is is, is kind of hard to do because a lot of the, the time the dress will get caught under your feet so i don't know if there's tool or if there's a hoop skirt or what she's got going on another maybe a combination of the two but this dress looks really good to me yeah i think Sephira looks really good um i don't i if Sephira often does like a character i didn't i didn't quite get what the character uh I, I didn't get I didn't get the character. I, I wish she for me she just came on just model this this gar- this garment that I think was beautiful and, she, and clearly very well done and constructed. But this is like this disgruntled uh, over it person that she character that she made. She walked around the way as again. I didn't think she needed it because this was just so well done. And I think the hair also worked and it was all good. And I just didn't think she needed that. But yeah, this looks very well done. She looks really good. Let's go to Nymphia wins. This look is really great. I honestly, I did not need that that opening veil. Like it, it, it was a little before she took the veil off. It was low key, a little bit giving Alaska's reveal reveal look, where she just kind of had a big thing over her head and it was just losing a lot of the dimension. But for me, once she took the thing off, this look is absolutely stunning. I love everything about this look i love the way she's walking i love that it gives that true morticia adams like not morticia adams who's the one who wears a dress where it's all the way down to your ankles and you can like barely walk i think it is morticia like this look is just so good it looks so high fashion to me high fashion yeah i think it feels really good we all know if there's a design challenge nymphia is always gonna fucking turn it out i'm still obsessed with that fucking 
Thai outfit that she made for design challenge. It was so good. And this is no exception. I, I think she said that those weren't even feathers. They were something else that looked like feathers. And when she was constructing, I forgot what she said, the, the material was. But this looks really well done. And she looks so beautiful. And even when she was talking in Untucked, and she was just talking to PJ about how she wanted her to be in the bottom, whatever. It, she just looks so stunningly beautiful. I think she looks sickening. And I think if you're really knocked it out of the park, again, she looks really, really, really good. But, bitch, we got to go on to Miss Q, honey, because this was really dope. And I loved the hair. And I loved this coat. And I loved a lot. I, I think Q looked really, really, really good. And it, you turn it around, it was this big bow in the back. It was just really well done. And I think Q also knocks it apart. But I feel like the makeup and the hair really brought it, brought it into the world for me. Uh, this seems a little bit more club kid than goth. But I would say it's, it is a club kid doing goth as a verse to a goth doing club kid um but that being said this look is remarkable i would say craftsmanship wise this is hands down the best thing on the stage uh this dress this coat whatever she called it this overcoat thing is just incredibly well made that big bow in the back was so gorgeous it wasn't clunky. She wasn't tripping over it. She just wore it really, really well. What she's doing with her makeup is very creative. What she's doing with her hair is really creative. I don't know if she had this hair packed. I mean, I normally don't like that she just won't wear a wig. And like the only time, I think the only time we've seen her in a wig was during Judy Garland. After that, it's always some fucking weird wig or a thing on her head or just something wacky. But this time, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I feel like I honestly would have given this win to Nymphia. I would have given the win to Nymphia over her just because I feel like Nymphia's is more goth. So when RuPaul keeps saying Morticia, Elvira, I don't get any of that from what Hugh is wearing. And Ru RuPaul was pretty explicit in saying it needs to be Morticia does Chanel or Elvira does Gucci or whatever the fuck she said. Um, and I feel like a lot of other people got that got that memo. But Hughes isn't giving quite that. If I saw this out of context, I would have I would never say Morticia Elvira, and I probably wouldn't say Goth either. I'd probably say, oh, Club Kid. Um that's a fair critique. I still think this is really well done. And it, it was it was this like neo goth situation, which I thought was like a new way to kind of Im imagine goth in a way that we haven't thought about it before. And then I think it looks really cool. And yeah, I think she looks really even her presentation of the look too, I thought was very strong, which probably uh, nab her the win over Nymphia, who also Nymphia already has through two wins already as well. Um, yeah. Um, so in the judging, um, Michelle called Maya out for not knowing how to sew. She's like, "You can't sew. How the fuck did you make this?" And um, she's pretty forthcoming with what happened. Um, and other girls seem annoyed, but I'm also like, "Why are you annoyed that? Like, why are you annoyed that Safira held Maya?" Like, why do you care? Also, she's in the bottom, so why does it matter? Like, there, Safira Epimaya did nothing to you. There was no negative recourse whatsoever to you having Maya get help from Safira. Literally none. So I don't understand what the big issue was, to be honest. Um, I also think that it's not really a big deal either for me. I agree because, Rich, a few challenges ago, my, uh, what's her name? Megami literally wrote Nymphia's verse in the whole song. Like, she wrote the challenge for her. So that's literally half the that's half the challenge. What happened was was writing and performing your lyrics, and but it wasn't part of the episode though. So it was hard. It's hard to 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 true communicate about it because it because it just wasn't part of the episode. We only we only found out because of Twitter, which apparently Q deleted her Twitter. Apparently, well, cause she needed to because last week was wild. She was really good. She was going off the diva. She did herself a favor, girl. And don't go back. Don't go back either. Because let me say something, Twitter will never forget. The day you reinstate your Twitter, they're going to be right back in there calling you everything but a child of God. And you're going to be back there flapping your gums, looking crazy. Just stay off. You ever got a Twitter? You ever got a Twitter fights? Of course. It's LA Banks. Does it? Like with fans, though. You never got to fight with fans? Yeah, I have. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, I don't know you and Zelda were going back and forth, though. I thought it was like a little, that was like an Instagram thing, wasn't it? No, it was, it was, it was Twitter. It was back and forth on Twitter. Oh. Mm hmm. She always back and forth with somebody. She 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 she's she gonna fight people. She gonna she gonna say her part. She gonna say her piece, honey. That's what you're about. Um RuPaul said that Q's look would go down in the history books. You know, I, I don't say out loud that I really I really feel like Q's copper look was way better than uh, this. Agreed. This look is good. 
Yeah. But I was like, I feel like y'all are gagging over this and not over the, and like, yeah. y'all weren't even acting like this over the copper look. Y'all weren't acting like this. I will, they were acting like this over the sleeping bag look that Utica made, which I think was really, really good. I, I still think Utica's look is probably one of the best design challenge outfit made while at Drag Race. I do believe that. But now, honestly, but seeing against Q's copper look, I don't, I don't, I don't know anymore. I honestly think Q's copper look is, in my opinion, I agree, was way better than this. I think they were really, Rue saying, sometimes, sometimes Rue just be saying stuff. So. So this is gonna go. I mean, get yeah, this is a good look. She should have. I, I think she should have won, but her couple look was way better than this. I think that was a stronger look. So Q did win, and and when she won, she said, "Honestly, I should have won all three design challenges." See, this this this. this, this Do you agree? No, because the other one, the other one was won by uh, one was won by Nymphia. The other one by Nymphia. Won, yeah. The other, and the other two were won by Q. Yeah, and I think Nymphia won our design challenge. The first. First, Kim won two, and who won the other one? Who won the Wizard of Oz? Naomi. There it is. Yeah. I think that, I think that Nymphia deserves to win the first one. Nymphia absolutely deserves to win the first one. For sure. Yeah. Um, When they started fucking, okay, so they end, so we find out that the bottom three queens are Morphine, uh, the bottom three queens are Morphine, plasma. um, Maya, and Plasma, mm -hmm. and this is not shocking. I think this is the correct bottom three, in my honest opinion. Um, and Morphine is saved, and I think that is the correct answer, in my opinion. And they are they are dancing to the they are lip syncing to the TikTok dance version of uh whatever that lady what's it called? Oh, dance, 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 my, dance, Bloody Mary, me, Lady Gaga. Bloody Mary. And I love that on the screen it said TikTok version. I don't know why that tickled me and took me out so hard, but that really sent me that it said TikTok version on the screen. Damn. Um and let me tell right now, this lip sync was entertaining for so many reasons. So many reasons. When First of all, the dip. I said, Oh Lord, she's gonna break she's gonna break her knee. A song with a dance break against Maya Mon LePage. They never wanted Plasma to have a chance. <laughs> they didn't want Plasma to get a chance to breathe. They had a song with a full-on dance break against Maya Amon Lapaya. Lep um, she literally never stood a chance. And Maya went bananas. Maya was flipping. She was fucking catwalking. She was duck walking. She was fucking spins and dips. She was fucking emoting. And, but then she did that weird fucking reveal, which I, I don't think, I don't, I don't know why, why she did that. And then this, the funniest line from the entire season, I've never seen a wig reveal into a beanie before. I literally burst out laughing. That is the, I that thought is it was a beanie the, too. I thought it was, she, she was going to do some type of gag. That is funnier than anything that was said in Snatch Game, anything written for any of the challenges. That is the funniest thing that has been said out loud this entire season. I've never seen a wig, wig reveal into a beanie. I thought it was, I really thought it was a beanie. I was like, oh, she reveals it a beanie. It was a beanie. What else was it? No, I think. A it, stocking cap? No, it was a stocking cap for her wig. But it didn't, but it, but it looked like one of the kind you work out with. It didn't look like, the, it didn't, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a stocking cap. Because stocking caps are very, it's like, they're like, they're made of nylon. I think, she, I think, this she, thing was, I, this thing was, I think she may have had multiple made of ones on. I think, she, I think, I, I, I think, I think Maya may have. Bob, I don't think she put a beanie under her it's the kind of thing you put on your head. First of all, first of all, I want to say out loud that people, drag queens prep their hair in very interesting ways because we're all making up our own things. I've seen queens do some stuff in their heads. You'd be like, why would you do that? It's because I learned it that way. What she was wearing was not a stocking cap. It, it was some sort of a thing to keep her hair safe from her wig. But it, it looked like the kind of thing that you work out in, especially if you don't have hair what thing you and you don't want in? sweat dripping down your head. I don't know. It's like a, it's like a sweatband, but it's not a sweatband. It's, it's a sweatband. It's a, it looks it's it's literally what she had on her head. If you want to envision it and envision what she had on her head, it's just that. And if you're bald, when you're sweating, it stops your sweat from when you don't have hair, it stops your sweat from dripping down. If you Google like, like Nike like a Nike workout cap. Like you mean like the like the thing, the this? The like the like No. It it literally looks exactly like what Maya had on her head. I, I've never know. seen this. Well, you saw it today when Maya was lip syncing. I don't know. I don't think I, I. I. What I think it was, it was like multiple wig caps, and it just scrunched up to go to pull it up. That's. What, I don't think it was what you're describing. This is it. Is this without the Nike symbol on it? S send it. To, it's it's going to be too blurry. So send it to the. I'll send it to you. If you if you just Google Nike sweat cap, uh, it's literally it is exactly what Maya had on 
just I- ignore the 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 um the Nike logo. That is that is literally the thing she had on. Do you see it? Um, no, it was not that. Well, I mean, you don't know, and I don't know. We're we're both assuming. Um, and I also don't understand why she had that on instead of the braid because it it, it was her, her hair wasn't pinned to it, so it didn't look like wig prep because it wasn't. I don't understand. I don't understand why she had it That's on. That's not a thing. So because we've seen Maya get ready in the, in the workroom before when they're getting ready before the runway. And she has stocking caps on. So I don't know why she would change. Also, if Maya had that on under, a, 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 we would have seen it. In the, I don't. I don't think that's what it was. I think that. I think. To be honest, I'm not terribly interested in discussing what this thing was. I'm really not that invested in it. Um, well, I, I, but I, 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 I am, and I think that Maya okay, had on. Go a, ahead. A, talk. Talk more about it. What, what, a what more do you want to say about it? On. Y'all, y'all making Maya sound like some psychotic person wearing a damn. <laughs> That's not psychotic. Doing something unconventional for drag is not psychotic. Wearing a do dura- makes- not a drag. Wearing 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 a wearing a fucking a scully under her wig. That sounds crazy. Doing something unconventional in drag is not psychotic. That's that's crazy. Yes, jail. If 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 Maya had if Maya had a beanie a bean bag a a, a, a bean cap under her, a bean bag under her wig, that is psychotic behavior. How much more would you like to talk about this? I respect, I respect my opinions on it. Super. So when 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 they're doing the, like their lip sync, it just seems clear to me that there's no way Plasma could possibly, possibly win this lip sync. From from the moment the song started playing, it just did not seem like there was any way Maya, I mean Plasma, could stand a chance. But there's also a thing with Maya. I'm like, her she does not do a lot of attention to detail, which kind of like un, un, annoys me a little bit. I'm kind of like just little stuff like, why aren't you wearing panties? But also, maybe she didn't know she's gonna go upside down. But but also, like, it just kind of kills the illusion. And like, why did you pull your cap off and not have like a, at least a kitty cat wig on underneath? Why 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 didn't you just reveal to your braids instead of like it? Just certain things. I'm just like Maya. I think she could really benefit from like a like a, like a creative director type to help her. Like, you know uh do some of the things look engage in some of the areas that she might look over when she's uh preparing for a performance that being said she fucking wiped the floor of plasma and i think rightfully she deserved to stay now there's an argument to say like plasma has been doing better overall in the season plasma has two challenge wins maya has zero this is plasma first time at the bottom this is maya's third time but someone brought up a good point like it's a lip sync for your life right when you're at that point you kind of you're washing away track record like it's a lip sync for your life. If, if you're taking track record into your lip sync for your life, then the person who is at a disadvantage, why are they even trying to lip sync? Like it's a lip sync for your life, and the lip sync is what's determining who is staying at that point. Like this, your your work in the season brought you to this point, and now only the lip sync is determining what is happening next. I think the reason why I think there comes a point in the season, and obviously there are no rules. You can literally send whoever you want home. So there are no rules, but like there does come a point in the season. I don't know if we're there yet. There comes a point in the season where you ha- where I think considering track record actually does make sense because you're wondering who has more to offer specifically for the competition, who has more to offer in terms of the show and making the show good and doing a good job and excelling further down the line. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet. Maybe in like one or two more girls being gone, it's time to start considering track records. But I, I can see someone making an argument for that because like when you, when you look at something like um, Shea kool versus Sasha Velour, Sasha Velour's lip sync was so iconic that it made sense that it kind of washed a lot away because it was just so insane. It was next level insane. It was mind-blowingly insane. But Shay's track record was banana. She had four wins. Four fucking wins against Sasha's two um but then again I guess those four wins paled in comparison to what she did specifically in that one lip sync um but I I agree that Plasma should have gone home and that uh Maya certainly won over her but if they would have been like well I want to see what this was your third time in the bottom because it's hard to it's hard to envision um not only a win for Maya and the show but it's it's getting kind of hard to envision a win even in a challenge because of how frequently she is in the bottom. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I, I, then, 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 then why have a listen, then why have a listen for your life? Then be like, then my, it's time for you to go home. You know what I mean? 
in then, the event that something does happen so crazy but like i said i i think that in this scenario it made sense that maya won that she lip sync and it's also just the structure of the show like we're just not, we're gonna we're gonna tear down the structure of the show because because one girl is doing really bad and one girl's doing really well right no no but that that's my point i'm like i'm like i'm like that is the structure of the show the lip sync for your life so at that point it's 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 I don't think it's fair to to count. Well, Plasma had three wins, so even if Maya did a good, I, I, I that, that's my point. Like that's the structure of the show. So at that point, it's the lip sync that is determining who's going on next, not your track record, not the fact that you won the Rusical, but how are you doing in the lip sync specifically? I mean, kind of, unless someone does something really gaggy, and I think Maya did something really gaggy. You know what I mean? Or unless someone's track record is just really fucking gaggy. Um, like for example, if like Bianca landed in the bottom against Laganja, it would have been crazy to send Bianca home. That would have just that would that would have just been bad TV. It wouldn't have made sense. It would have been stupid. I do think Laganja would more than likely beat Bianca in a lip sync. I, I, I just want to say I don't know. I think that I don't think so. <laughs> okay, I'm not even engaging that one. Um, so then uh, Plasma, you know, sashays away and wiggles her little tail home. No, she but, seems but, really but, inexperienced. But listen, Laganja. Oh no, Laganja. I'm thinking, yes, you're saying Laganja. I'm thinking Adore. But well, I say neither Adore, Adore or Bianca are lip syncers. So I'm like, I could see a world where Bianca could be Adore. But you're talking about Laganja, a Miss Miss Pussy, Miss, Miss, Miss Mama. Let's get sickening. Got it. Yeah. Um, Plasma seems really in acceptance of her elimination. She doesn't seem shook, shattered, or shorn. I do not like the poetry at the top of the runway. I don't like poems when you enter the workroom. I don't like plasma. poems. When- very I don't crazy. like poems when you. I don't like poems when you leave. The only poem I really didn't mind was Suki Nut Megan Nauseous because it was just so camp. When Suki said "much, much, crunch, crunch," I, I don't know. I don't remember what it was, but something about that I thought was just so fucking camp that it made it funny to me. But typically speaking, I do not like this fucking poetry, these haikus, these sonnets. In the intro, in the workroom, and at the top of the runway, it's very plasma behavior. I am not shocked. I am not gagged that this is how plasma is choosing to leave Drag Race, and it fits into her entire narrative of her brand and who she is as a person. And it seems very, very plasma behavior. VPB. I, I have said this before, and I will really say it again: preparing an exit line is crazy. I will die on this hill. Well, preparing know- an exit line on RuPaul's Drag Race is wild i cannot fathom why you would do that well you know the, the, the literally everyone except one's gonna do it so why not be be safe than sorry and also in my mind plasma thought about that on on that day in the workroom oh when, when they were in untucked plasma was like oh my god it's my moment when my moment and she was she came up with that there in my mind because she couldn't so be me could not be me wouldn't be me won't be me won't be me. And then now, I'm not saying I would never get eliminated. All I'm saying is I'm not I'm not preparing what I'm gonna say before I pack and go to fucking RuPaul's Drag Race. And I know some girls have their exit lines planned before they even get on the plane to go there. Before they get gassed, that's dude. wild. And uh, with that being said, there are seven seven girls left in RuPaul's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven left girls. Oh my god, the top seven. It's kind of wild. I feel this this season. I. I think this is a good season of Drag Race. I'm really enjoying the season of Girls. And I can't... I'm trying to think who is going to go home next. Who is it? Who do you think go home next? Morphine. Let me look at who is in the cast. I My guess is that the next one to go home is going to be either Maya or Morphine. Yeah. I could see it being... Because neither one of them is just excelling. Or has you know won I mean? anything. I mean, Morph- Maya is excelling at fucking um, sending people home. She's yeah. she's excelling at that for sure, but morphine. I can see morphine or Maya going home next for sure. Yeah, I can see that as well. And not really anyone else. I mean, if Dawn went home, it wouldn't be crazy, but any anyone else going home would be literally shocking. I'd be like, "What the fuck?" I definitely is happening. Right I definitely thought Plasma going further. I just I, in my mind, she's going to be top five at least. I mean, top me too. I saw more for Plasma. I saw a lot more for Plasma. I like, I think Plasma is really fun. I love that she doesn't, that she is cheesy and that she's corny and that she, she seems to kind of like be like, I'm going to have fun. I don't care if people think I'm not, if people don't think I'm cool. And I think that's honestly really fucking, I actually think that is cool to, to do your thing so unabashedly 
and lean into the thing that makes you. She's so she's so Leah Michelle, but less villain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or what was Leah Michelle's character's called, Jacob? What was her character's name? Rachel Berry. Rachel Berry. Yeah, it's it's very Rachel Berry. Um, and honestly, she better work. I think she's and she, and she seems to be taking on the chin really well, even during Untucked. She just kind of is like being pretty. She's she's saying she's really being herself, which I think is awesome. She's not editing herself to seem more cool. And there you have it, y'all. Please go to our Patreon where we where we will be talking about this week's Untucked and the dramas and the things that happen there. We'll see you guys at the sibling rivalry Patreon. Bye, everyone.